We're live. Right. So we are all dealing with a lot right now. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of, of stressors in our lives. And we may or may not have the tools that we need to deal with that. So today we have brought you Mr. Gabriel Arroyos of Soaring Families Counseling to answer some of those questions and give us the tools that we need. I need a tool right now, as you can hear in the background. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just really excited to, to have you here, Gabriel. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Yeah, Hi, definitely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. We're very <laughs> excited to have you. Awesome. And I hope everybody grabbed their lunches. Uh, since this is lunch and learn, we're going to learn from Mr. Gabriel and uh, we are going to enjoy some lunch. So Diana, tell us, what did you bring for lunch today? Um, I have a Greek salad. I don't know. Can you guys see it? Yes. Oh my gosh. That looks so good. Yes. And all the vegetables are from my garden. So what? that's amazing. If you guys haven't seen Diana's garden, check her out on Facebook and Instagram. It is a pretty incredible garden. Uh, and Gabriel, what did you bring today? I have super fajitas from uh, Mikosina restaurant in the Highland. So they were kind enough to deliver me some food. And uh, if you haven't had it before, it's amazing. So it's, it's chicken, shrimp, and beef fajitas. No normally in a sit down restaurant, it comes on a sizzling skillet and it's amazing. It's my favorite meal. So they're kind enough to deliver <laughs> fajitas for me today. Oh, that's so amazing. And I love them. I cannot wait to get back in there and get those sizzling plates <laughs> delivered. Oh, my mouth is watering. Uh, Mexican food is my favorite food on the planet. And today I have uh, this wonderful bento box made by my four-year-old daughter. She was inspired by Mind Over Munch uh, to create this for me. Here she is. We want to say hello from the chef herself. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for making it. I'm really excited to enjoy it. So, so awesome. Is with us from uh, Soaring Families Counseling. He has a YouTube channel um, and he does telehealth so it doesn't matter if we're on quarantine or not Gabe is here to um, help and he has a lot of great resources for us um, all the links are below um, to help us kind of manage this time mentally and physically um, it's a lot going on with everybody uh, out there not just here in the U.S. but the entire world so um, we're super excited for Gabe to give us some great tips. Um, one of the things that uh, he and I and Michelle had talked about was some healthy um, home coping skills because we are kind of all stuck here and I know people are getting a little stir crazy. Um, and I just in our pre-interview, I got so much from what he told us and it really kind of helped me to center myself. So I was hoping you could share some of those home uh, healthy coping skills. Yeah, definitely. You know, while, while we're home right now, this is this is difficult for everybody, including myself. Um, I always tell everybody like, yeah, you know, I'm never home. I usually work 14, 16 hour days while I'm out at the office. So it's, it's kind of a refresher of being home, but still it kind of gets to us when we have no other options and right. we're forced to stay at home. Um, so definitely the bulk of my work right now during this time has been focusing on coping skills to practice while we're in the home. And a lot of people will start off by asking, well, well, what are coping skills? I hear this a lot. I hear it therapeutically, but what exactly are coping skills? And the way that I talk about coping skills is anything that you can do to make you feel better. So now I'm going to put a little caveat on that because we don't want to do some things that are going to make us feel better if they're illegal or get us into trouble. Uh, so it all comes with a healthy moderation. So things that are gonna make us feel better. Uh, for example, uh, trying new things. So while we are in quarantine, I'm challenging people, even myself, to try new things, learning new language, trying new hobbies, um, crocheting, cooking, baking, art, whatever it may be. So it's whatever's gonna make you feel better while you're in home, uh, that could be your coping skill. Yeah, gardening's been a, a real lifesaver for me. Yeah, perfect. And I love to cook. 
So uh, you find me in the kitchen most of the time. <laughs> if I'm upset, I'm probably going to make pancakes. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that we mentioned, Gabe, was mindfulness. And that word's thrown around a lot. Like a lot of people talk about mindfulness and how you need to have it. But what exactly does that mean? Yeah, you know, that's a good question because there's a lot of different definitions from depending on who you're talking to and, and depending on how they practice it. But essentially, mindfulness is all about being in the here and now. So being present moment focused. So what I like to do when I'm working with clients is I, I draw like a, a timeline. So we have our past and we have our future. And what our mind likes to do a lot is it's, it's very lazy in the sense of it doesn't like to create new things. It likes to go to memory. So it goes to the past. So for example, we've all been doing Zoom calls. So this might be very reminiscent of another interview we've done, another Zoom call we've done. This reminds us of something. And it's where our mind automatically goes there. And then it starts bringing up thoughts, memories, emotions, and that's counterproductive to mindfulness because that's going to bring up something for us. So with mindfulness, we want to for force our perspective to being here and now, right here, right now. The date is May 14th, 2020. Yeah, I've done Zoom calls before, even with you guys, um, but this is a brand new experience. And I also don't want to be thinking about forward thoughts, so the future, and that's where anxiety comes from is thinking about all those what ifs, especially right now, you know, we're all thinking, well, when is this gonna end? When, when can I go back to Disneyland? When can I go back to movies, restaurants, or, you know, how's my life gonna change? What about my job security? All these thoughts start creating anxiety and worry. And that's what mindfulness is gonna help us in is being here and now, focusing on the present moment to deter us from the what if thoughts that create anxiety and then stop us from connecting things from the past, which could bring up depressive feelings. Right. When you're trying to focus in on that, so say I, I'm sitting here now and, and I'm having a hard time being in this moment, is there anything that, that we can do to help center ourselves so that we can cut off the, the noise that's in our head? Yeah, for sure. And, and you know, what I recommend is using just your five senses, right? So grounding yourself to here and now. I usually tell people to start looking around and what is it that you're seeing right here in the moment? So if you see my wall, it's blue, right? So I start calling out colors. If you see the candle over here, it's pink. And start grounding yourself to what you can visually see. And then what can you feel? You know, I feel the material of my coat. I, I feel my feet on my carpet. I'm not wearing shoes, just full disclosure. I'm not wearing shoes right now at home. <laughs> so I feel, I feel my feet sinking into this very fluffy carpet rug that I have. And I start grounding myself into the here and now with the senses, what I could hear, what I could smell, what I could taste and bringing myself to here and now. A good quick, um, kind of like a, a quick tip that I give people is cold, coldness, will trigger us to here and now really fast. So I tell people just grab, grab an ice pack, grab some cold water, splash it on your face, grab your drink, all right? Your cold drink. And that's gonna ground us to the here and now because it, it's, it's that sensation that's gonna bring us present moment. I love the calling out colors. I've heard that before, like when you're trying to get in the present. But the, the trick is, is to get in the present when you're in an anxiety driven state, right? You've already like put yourself in that future, what's gonna happen and you're all twisted up inside and then pulling back from that. I think um, Definitely. that's where you come in, Gabe, as a therapist. <laughs> yeah. um, well, you know, I, I usually tell this to clients is because some, some people, sometimes people have um, the idea that I'm gonna wave a magic wand and then all your troubles are gonna go away. And that's not how therapy works, unfortunately. Um, what therapy is, is it's providing support and coping skills. And just like anything else, it takes practice. So this mindfulness practice, uh, a lot of people get introduced to this and they're like, wow, this is so hard. My mind's going, you know, miles a minute and, and I can't focus on these things. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, because our mind in this day and age, we're all trained to do multiple things at once. I, I have that urge to check my phone because I, I hear notifications going off. And that's how we're trained. We're normally on our, our phones or our devices while we're doing multiple things. 
And mindfulness is retraining our mind to be present moment and fully engaged in things. So it does take a lot of practice and it's not gonna work right out the gate the first time you try it, especially if you're in a panic situation. I can't be like, oh man, Gabriel told me, let me just count out five colors and all my anxieties are gonna go away. That's unfortunately not how it works. So some people, it, they catch on really quickly and it, it works faster, but ultimately this is a skill set that we have to practice. And just like in my YouTube videos or on my Facebook and social media, I'm challenging people to try mindfulness practice at least five minutes a day. And in that way, we're building up that endurance and tolerance to be able to call on that coping skill when we need it. I love that. Yeah. That's, there's a lot of value in being able to be here and do one thing at a time, mm -hmm. which we, which society like pushes us against. Right. But if yeah. you, yeah, I, that's awesome. And um, the other thing we talked about was self-compassion and I don't know about the rest of you. Oh, before we go on, I wanted to say hello, Ruth Clark and Roxanne. Thank you for joining us. Hello. <laughs> um, but self-compassion, that's something I think ev myself, I really struggle with that. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of people do. Um, just that, like, like you're meaner to yourself than anybody else is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Just agreeing. <laughs> I definitely think, you know, we're the, the, the thoughts that you have in your head, the things you tell yourself, you would never say to another person. Oh my gosh, you know. No, you, you just wouldn't. And so yeah. being compassionate towards yourself is so important because then how else can you be compassionate to others? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I tell people when, when I get into this concept, this is, this is probably the most difficult thing to overcome in therapy is people come in with these uh, ideas of themselves and whether they're based off of experience or just something that they've created themselves. I break down that there's different perspectives that we have to be aware of. There's the way we view ourselves. There's the way people truly view us. And then there's the way that we believe others view us. Mm -hmm. right? So even for myself, like, well, I've been doing uh, more social media and kind of the YouTube stuff. Like I'm constantly watching what I record. I'm just like, man, this makes no sense. Like I, I, I sound ridiculous and like I look funny or whatever the case may be. And the, these are all ideas in my own head. And then I show other people and they're like, man, this is a great video. What are you talking about? Um, oh, well, great. The video's not for me. It's for you. So I, I'm glad you like it. And that's where that self-compassion comes in is challenging yourself to Tell yourself that it's okay, that you're okay, that you're enough, and you're doing exactly what you should be doing right here, right now. I tell people, um, and people have a little bit of a hang up with this saying, but telling yourself, I'm doing the best I can in this given moment. And I want to break that down, right? I'm doing the best I can in this given moment, right here, right now. So now objectively, like, do I speak better on different days? Probably, right? Maybe, I don't know, right? Comparative to a, a actual public speaker, okay, it's gonna be different, right? And then if I'm feeling sick or if I'm feeling tired, my best right now is all I have. So I don't wanna compare objectively to other times. Once again, it's being here and now I am giving my best right here, right now in this moment. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah it uh. does. And I think you, uh, with self-care, um, I, I know you had talked a little bit about like um, comparing it to like being on a, an airplane, you know, like <laughs> when the, the mask drops down and, and you have to put on your own mask before you can put on others' masks. Yeah. And I know like as a parent, that was something that really radiated with me because it is important um, to take care of yourself so that you can care, for, you know, so I can care for my kids. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank yeah. you, Paul and Charlene, for the likes and for joining us. Um, so we, the other thing we talked about was self-love, which kind of ties into self-compassion, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you had recommended some awesome apps to help with the mindfulness um, and the self-love and self-compassion. 
Yeah, for mindfulness, I, I definitely recommend Headspace. Headspace is a great app that I even practice myself. And then there's a Calm app. And th they, for more or less, do the same thing. They're walking you through exercises of mindfulness. Calm, I usually like more at bedtime because they have a bedtime uh, series of providing like uh, instrumental music or exercises walking you through just to kind of calm you down, slow your mind to get you better sleep. And then Headspace is more, I use that more on the daily active exercises. So how to get myself focused in the here and now and how to go throughout my day, which is being present moment focused and 100% within my given activity. Actually, Michelle turned me on to Calm like mm. a year ago. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. I was having a particularly like tough day and I get this text like, just try this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, it, did it help? It does, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It she does. helps me a lot. She's my sounding board. Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, when, during all of this, right, we're all like on, on lockdown and we're in quarantine and we're dealing with so many different thoughts and feelings and situations we're just not prepared for. Uh, what would you recommend for, for families that are in, in this um, world right now? Like how do, how do we, we deal with this? Yeah, you know, it, it's really tough. And I like that you brought up, you know, as a, a mother, right? Mm -hmm. Self-care is one of those hard concepts. And honestly, in my experience with working with diverse populations and, and a lot of different clients, it's usually mothers that have the hardest time with self-care. And that's when I use that analogy of if, if you've never been on a plane before, what they tell you is the emergency procedures of if the cabinet was to lose pressure, oxygen masks are gonna fall from the ceiling, secure it on yourself and help those around you. And moms and parents, they have this amazing you know, um, drive of protecting their children and providing for their families, which is an amazing thing. Um, and, and there's nothing, nothing else in this world quite like it. And I, I think that that's an amazing, beautiful uh, gift that mothers share with their families and children and parents in general. And I tell them, you know, well, what happens if you're not taking care of yourself? And, you know, that ship goes down, right? You know, who, who's going to help your kids then? All right. Well, of course, maybe your husband and, and dad, but you definitely have to care for yourself, especially in a time like this, is taking your time that you need with self-care, self-love, self-compassion to be able to help those around you and the people that you care about. Yeah. So when it, when it comes to um, this particular pandemic and being in quarantine, we're adjusting to a lot of things, working from home. Um, a lot of kids are distance learning now. So our time is really intertwined together 24 seven with our families. And once again, it's practicing that self care and then also practicing compassion for yourself and your family. Right, that's awesome. So for resources guys, Gabe has a video series um, which he mentioned earlier, by the way, Gabe, I've watched all your videos and they're really, really good. Thank you. Yeah, really <laughs> and I would tell you if you looked funny or didn't. <laughs> you look really like, I saw them, I was like, wow, these are awesome. Yeah, so definitely. Really, yeah, it's a really good series, guys. I highly recommend it. Um, the link's below. He's got videos on all kinds of different things. And I mean, you know, even if you're the most well-adjusted person in the world, like we're in the middle of a global pandemic, like you're going to have a moment, right? So he's got a lot of tips in there to um, just, you know, help get through this and other things in your life too. You know, there's going to be other things that come up and that you're going to have to deal with. Um, but we were kind of talking about families a little bit and um, I wanted to touch on that a little more because I know that there's a lot of parents at home with their kids. Um, and I know just with Michelle um, on our team, she's my lead buyer specialist and it's been challenging, right? She's got three kids. She's trying to homeschool. Um, she has her mother-in-law, her husband's working from home. Like at any given moment, like there's a child like running past like a blizzard, right? Of kids. And she's trying to work and um, she has had to like set limits mm -hmm. us as her team. Like, Hey guys, I, you know, I can't do that. Like, it's just, 
it's not possible for me at this point. And, and us, me, particularly as the, as her leader, having that understanding that her, her boat, and I've seen this on Facebook a lot, the boat she's sailing in looks very different than the boat I'm sailing in. Right. And that recognition is important. Um, but I wanted to just have you talk a little bit about um, managing your kids and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, I think that that's an amazing example. And, and kudos to you, Michelle, for setting out those boundaries of, hey, you know, I have to prioritize these things. And I think that that's essentially where it starts is, you know, I think everybody has different employers and, and different circumstances. And hopefully, you know, our, all of our employers are as compassionate and understanding as Diana was with you. Um, but I think it, it starts with setting boundaries and communicating, right? Yeah. We have to communicate these things. We can't assume that like, oh, my boss should know. They should understand, you right. know, uh, I have kids. Uh, we have to communicate those things and, and have a discussion of saying, hey, you know, um, I, I'm doing it the best I can right now in this given moment and I'm balancing my work. Uh, but also I have the children that I have to manage and, and prioritize with certain things. So setting that boundary and communicating with whoever it is that you need to communicate. And I think that even internally with your family, once again, communicating, okay, well, this is mommy's work time or this is daddy's work time. And we need to have a little bit of a separate space and setting those boundaries with your family and also just having compassion. You know, I think that sometimes people want to put on that brave face and, and, you know, especially for parents, we want to put on that brave face and say, no, everything's okay. And we're going to go as business as usual, but it's okay to have those conversations with your children and with the rest of your family of saying, Hey, you know what? I'm feeling, you know, that this is difficult and this is hard and this is adjustment, but we all have to play a part in this. And you could take your own time if you need, and I could take my own time if I need. And once again, just communicating those things while practicing compassion for yourself of how you're feeling during these difficult times and having compassion for your children or, or significant others or whoever else you may be living with. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's, that's great. And, you know, and, and I know there's, the, uh, there's a lot of people like me in my boat, you know, that, whose boats do look like mine. Right. Um, and then there's others where, where they're, they're more like what, what Diana's going through. Um, she's, she's by herself, you know, um, and in a time where we're all so lonely, like this pulls you away from everything. We're always around. How do you deal with, with that? It, it's just like kind of the flip side of the coin, right? Not only you're all, all alone, you know, with so your dogs. Yeah. <laughs> do, <laughs> dealing with loneliness. Um, funny enough, I just recorded a video. So that's actually going to be coming on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah. So it's, it's, everybody. <laughs> so, so coping with loneliness, especially during COVID-19, you know, what I hear a lot is we have this challenge internally where we'll feel lonely, but we inevitably start withdrawing because we're feeling lonely. We start feeling down, we, we uh, feel sad, we feel depressed, and we start isolating more. So because we're lacking the motivation to make those connections, even though we want the connection, we don't have the motivation or the drive to go after it. So the biggest thing that I tell people is do not turn down opportunities. Do not turn down opportunities. You know, yeah, Zoom is is weird and it's it's a weird transition, um, and it's not our, our normal and it's not giving us or it's not feeling the needs that we have. But you know, what? it's what we have. So we use what we have and we make that connection. So don't refuse it. Don't ignore text. Don't ignore Facebook challenges um, or, or Twitter engagement or whatever social media that you use those phone calls, uh, the FaceTime, Skype, whatever, engage in whatever's being presented to you. And you could also reach out and ask for that engagement. There's nothing wrong with doing that, of sending a text and saying, hey, you know, I'm feeling lonely right now. I just want to chat. Right? I want to check in with you um, or, or giving a call because chances are that person that you're reaching out to is feeling the same exact way. We're all in this together. We're all missing someone or missing something. So connect with one another and challenge yourself to reach out to those people to curve that loneliness. And you know, even though we're alone right now, 
right? If, if we are living alone at our, our house and we're in quarantine, it doesn't mean we have to be lonely. Loneliness comes from a, a sense of not connecting and not belonging. And that's definitely not the case, right? We do have all these people that we can connect with that we love and miss and love us and miss us too. So connect with them. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic. The, um, you're isolated, not by choice, mm -hmm. but then you tend to isolate more weirdly, right? Like mm -hmm. you're lonely and then you tend to isolate. And I've, I've found myself doing that on occasion. And luckily I have a team meeting call every day. Like it's very hard for me to like, to get in that like pity party cycle because I'm, I have to work. So yeah. thank God for work. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, I gave you, you've given us some really amazing advice today. I'm just curious, how, how did you get into counseling? How did you become a therapist? Like what inspired you to do this? Um, you know, I was, I was actually diagnosed with diabetes at the age of 10. So oh. that experience, um, being hospitalized and, and adjusting to quite a different lifestyle um, that led me into seeing a, a medical social worker and starting therapy and learning how to cope with all those changes. And that inspired me. I was like, wow, you know, like th this is helpful and I can do this to help other people, especially with the experiences I've had in my own life. Um, so actually that's my specialty is I work with families and children with chronic illness. So I specialize in working within that population. I do work with other populations and other diagnoses and, and situations as well, uh, like depression and anxiety. But that's really where my passion is, is relating into a very drastic lifestyle change and being able to help people overcome that with their existing strengths and support that they already have. Oh, you are well positioned to help with this situation. <laughs> That's what I was just going to say. It's like you basically specialize in what's happening right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like you, everyone, if you um, are, are in need, I, I highly recommend. I, I personally see a therapist. I, I know Diana does as well. I highly recommend that if you are not uh, seeing one that you seek therapy, even if, if you don't feel like you even need it. I, I really feel everyone would benefit from having someone to talk to, that sounding board that we all need who can help give us the advice that we need. And, you know, Gabriel is, as, as you can see, is an expert. He can really help you out. We have all this information linked below. Reach out to him, give him a call um, and get something set up so that you can start uh, learning those tools and being given the tools that you need to really uh, thrive from here on out. There's a lot of value in being able to just talk, mm -hmm. just unload. And you know what? They have to listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it is a little different on telehealth. It's very much like what we're doing right here. Um, but you know, it, it, you were using the tools that we have, right? Yeah, and do you do still get a lot. Like I can still see your face. I can, I get a sense of, of how you're feeling and how you're reacting um, a lot more than you can over the phone though. That's anyone awesome. can tell you that you can hear somebody over the phone and you can hear their emotions through the sound of their voice, even when they're playing nice, right? Um, so you can hear a smile. You can hear a smile. And uh, so, but the, the telehealth is, is not as off-putting as I thought it would be. It's, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Other than like, you know, I have to lock the doors, keep the kids out so I can have, you know, an hour um, a week, then it's okay. We can get that hour a week. So we're, they're starting to loosen the quarantine up a little bit. So one really um, like important, I think, transition that we're all gonna be making is going from quarantine mm. to normal life. And it's sort of a weird, like a weird dynamic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Gabe? Give us your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this, this is definitely a, a difficult subject that's coming up and a lot of my clients are bringing this up as well, um, even for myself. Right. With, with my diabetes, I'm part of that high risk population. So I think about when I have to go back into the office and ultimately I think it's the same steps is having compassion for yourself of saying, it's okay that I feel this way. It's okay that I might be scared 
anxious, worried, nervous, or excited, or, or I can't wait for it. You know, I think that everybody has a different feeling and just appreciating and respecting how you feel about the situation. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately it, it comes to your decision-making process, whatever you decide is going to be best for you and then communicating that. You know, I think that the decision is going to happen with me of where I have to communicate that decision of what I feel is best for me. And you know what? I might get pushback, right? I might tell my clients, hey, you know what? Quarantine's lifted. I don't feel ready to go into the office. And, and you know, I, my, my clients are all awesome. And I believe that they'd be understanding and would probably be in the same boat as me and saying, okay, yeah, you know, let's wait another month. Um, but there are circumstances for people that might get pushback of, well, why not? Or, you know, yeah. the, the governor released all the restrictions. Let's, let's go back into normal life. And I, I think it's one, having compassion for yourself that this is your decision, right? And it's your life and you have the right to make that decision and having compassion for the other person to say, yeah, you know what? I, I feel you. You know, this is a different time and I, I understand you want to go back to normal, um, but, but I'm not comfortable with that quite yet and setting the boundary for yourself in a healthy way. And yeah, just you know, it, yeah. you not allowing people to shame either. I see a little yeah. bit going on too. And it's, it's disappointing to see people do that, you know, mm -hmm. shame. Everyone's circumstances are different. Some people, you know, Michelle's has an at-risk family member in her house. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether I feel threatened by COVID-19 is beside the point. I wear a mask because I see her. So I don't wanna get her family sick, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have a good friend, uh, Michelle and I, um, shout out to you, Terrence. But we were talking about this whole thing when it first started and he said something really interesting that's kind of stuck with me throughout this is that we're in a situation that forces us to care about other people besides ourselves. Mm -hmm. That where we're called upon as a country to say, hey, I may be okay, it may be inconvenient for me, but what about my friend's mother? Mm -hmm. You know, that I see all the time. Like you're it's like we're really like have an opportunity to care about other people. So yeah. yeah. I like that you said that it's an opportunity to care about it. It is. Yeah, it is an opportunity. So the step up, y'all. <laughs> Get those masks on. <laughs> <laughs> and guys, if you're enjoying this, if you wouldn't mind giving us a thumbs up or a big heart, we'd really appreciate it and help right. get the information to more people. Norma Aroni gave us a like. Sam gave us a like. And David Truby, welcome. Um, so, yeah. Uh, there was one other thing before we sign off um, that we had talked about that I think is really important. And I think for those like type A, um, high D people, um, the desire, the, the pressure of feeling like you have to do more mm -hmm. throughout this. And I know I am feeling that pressure for sure, because there's so much as realtors that we can't do to move our business forward. And we've really had to pivot, but there's always that feeling of like, oh, I should should be doing this. I should be doing that. Why aren't I doing this? Why am I just in the garden when I could be studying, you know, or cleaning my closet out or whatever the thing is that's sitting on the back burner? Yeah. You know, um, I, I like your word choice because the key word there was should, right? And, <laughs> you know, there, there's a, a common therapy joke of stop shooting all over the place, right? I should do this, I should do that, I should do this. And, you know, that, that creates expectations. And, you know, expectations and absolutes are, are kind of a not so healthy thing for us to have in our mind. So we want to get away from the shoulds and start reframing it to the coulds, right? Well, well, I could, right? But I could also do this. And ultimately, it goes back to taking care of yourself, right? Like, should should I be doing X, Y, and Z? Sure, right? If if I put myself in that mind frame, but I'd rather look at it as a, a could. Could I do more, right, to help out the community? And that's ultimately why I started doing the blogs and I did the YouTube channel was because I wanted to help out my community. And it's also a good self-care exercise for me. It's getting my mind off of things and getting me engaged with things that I'm really passionate about. So changing the should to could 
and then figuring out what's going to be best for you. The only expectations you have or should have, should, right? (laughs) (laughs) Is taking care of yourself. And ultimately that's what we should be doing during this time is taking care of ourselves. We could be doing a lot of things and it's up to you to figure out what it is that you want to target and focus your time in of what's going to make you feel better and also productive. And a lot of people will ask me, well, you know, Gabe, um, you talk about self-care, but taking care of my kids is making me feel better or doing this for my family is making me feel better. Doing this for my work is making me feel better. Well, then great. That's a coping skill, right? I'm no one to judge of what you think is self-care. If it's making you feel better and it's taking care of yourself, so that way you're in the best mindset and emotional mental health, then do it. Yeah. I feel like we just had the most awesome counseling session ever. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And all of you guys did. So I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, if you know someone else out there that could benefit from what Gabe has shared with us today, uh, please tag them here or share the post so that they can hear it as well. Uh, the more people that we can help through this, the better off we're going to come out on the other side. And really, guys, check out Gabe's series. I mean, he's, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, Gabe. He's really an incredible person. We met him. We helped him buy a house. And just through the process, he's one of those people that you um, you feel good. He's like one of those people that make you feel like sunshine, right? Like that meme. Like he legitimately is that guy. So if you're looking for someone to talk with, um, you just need to you know, get through some things in your life, re- reach out to him because you he will really be able to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. So I think that's where we're going to end it today. If you feel like you came in late and you want to see it again, no worries. We are going to have this posted on um, our site at Diana Renee and you can check it out anytime. Also, don't forget to check out the links below for all the amazing apps that Gabriel um, suggested to us today. Um, And check out his YouTube page because it is incredible and it is just packed full of like chunky, delicious nuggets of helpfulness. So take a look at it um, and please like, share us and give us a big heart. We'll see you all next week, uh, right here, same time, same place. We have to introduce next week's guest. What was that? You have to introduce next week's guest. And next week's guest is Debbie. Debbie, yes. Debbie is an agent out in Texas. So um, as some of you may or may not know, uh, Texas has actually opened up early already. So they are fully reintegrating life out there. And uh, hopefully she'll be able to tell us a little bit about what the market's been looking like, as well as how people are reacting out in Texas to this uh, shift in um, the way that we do things. So I'm really looking forward to having her on. And thank you again, Gabriel, so thank much for j- joining us today. So um, it's really, really incredible. We appreciate it. Very thank timely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Looking forward to, to talking to with you some more soon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> See you guys later. Follow the red ribbons. Bye, everybody. Thank you.